We talking shit, yeah. We talking shit, baby, yeah. We talking shit, yeah. We talking shit, baby, talking shit, baby. We talking shit, yeah. We talking shit, baby, yeah. We talking shit, yeah. We talking shit, talking shit, baby. Hey, welcome to Talking Poop. <laughs> uh, I've got guests here. I've got Chris Wild. I've got. Hi, everybody. It's good to be back. I can't believe. When was the last time we were together? It was in Venice, California what, what, on your old show. I mean, oh, your old show. You came out to my house and did your podcast. I was blackout on your old show. When was the last time you and I were on a couch together podcasting uh, on your show? We've got Jamie Kennedy here as a guest too. Oh, I love Jamie <laughs> Kennedy. He he literally is in two, probably my favorite movie of all time. Certainly top five favorite movies of all time. Which one? Uh, William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet changed my life. Honestly, literally, it's like part of the reason why I moved out to Hollywood because I honestly wanted. I was upset that I wasn't in that movie. You and I saw part. that movie and I was like, "Holy shit! This fucking movie is young people. It's Shakespeare." It's fucking actors. It's fucking, it pops. I was like, I need to go to L.A. right now. It took a few months, but I got so we, out to we L.A. Have, we have you to thank for this. Well, <laughs> I created him? Yeah, this is all your fault. Do I bite my thumb at these, sir? Like that, like you are so, that you whole in, movie is so fucking good. This. Baz Luhrmann's best, <laughs> his second best is Moulin Rouge, arguably Strictly Ballroom. But Baz Luhrmann and young people and Shakespeare, like the whole amalgamation of that was honestly my favorite movie of the 90s. My favorite movie of all time is Die Hard. It has nothing to do with anything. However, <laughs> Jamie Kennedy was in probably my second favorite movie of all time, William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, brought to you by Baz Luhrmann. And then the fact that he was also fucking in As Good As It Gets with James L. Brooks. And my favorite actor what was of your all time, as good as it Jack gets? Nicholson. Hey, Hustler number three. <laughs> and Skeet Ulrich was gay hustler number two. Hustler number one. one. Who the fuck was two? Number three. Who Yo, was number two? Wouldn't it be cool if I was on camera? <laughs> or on a mic? <laughs> or on a microphone? I can't because you got okay. Hold on. I, Come on. We man. we think Jamie well, Kennedy was. I here. did a movie with Albert Brooks. I uh, wish I did a movie with James L. Brooks. Well, that guy's. I mean, they're both heavy hitters. As Brooks goes. Haven't seen you for a minute. Good to see you, bro. Good to see when you. When you invite me on a pod. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. First of all, when it's in Malibu. Yeah. That's already a commitment. Right? It's already a thing for you. Nine, it's already an hour and a half to get here. Number two, let me know if somebody's going to be three fucking quarters into a bottle of Captain Morgan. <laughs> well, it's just, <laughs> he's not the co-captain. Here's the situation. This is a great he's learning not... lesson for me. We restarted the podcast, <laughs> I hope, to Jesus Christ. I'm 52 years old. I've lived. Life is good. Yes. I try to ingratiate myself to the community, but I really am learning. Like, there's some things I don't have to do. Of course. <laughs> this is one of them. Yes. Eddie, I love you, but let's just talk shit, but keep it chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like I don't know. I love that I'm like, getting the lecture. Like, I have any. This I, is your, yeah, this is your house, bro. Oh, You're I, like, come do my he, pot. Yeah. I show up. Yeah. There's nine dudes the unwrapping condoms. <laughs> yeah. There's an old yes. guy in the parking lot in a test looking at a phone. I'm looking at him. I thought right. it was a grinder. Right. Like, I go up the hill. You're like, don't park up the hill. Right. Park down here. Mm -hmm. This guy's like, I run a rehab, and this guy's drunk. Drunk. I'm like, how yep. does the rehab? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, this is an experiment, right? And then right. this dude is literally demoning. He's a demon right now. I'm a demon. He's a demon. Bro, this is the reason why I don't drink is what's going on with you right now. 100%. Let me explain 100%. Why. Dude, 100%. you are a perfect example of why no one should drink. Right. Let me explain why. Please do. Dude, I haven't drank in over four years. I love drinking. I wasn't like wild, but like wine, if I was Italian wine, a sushi, a sake, sure. you know, good Belgian. With the... Goes well at breakfast. Yeah, I was getting so <laughs> fat and I could the hang, like just having three beers would knock me on my ass. Right. If you believe in this, I believe vibrations scientifically are being proven. Absolutely. Do you want to be the best version of yourself? I tried that. It didn't work. It wasn't Let me explain lucrative. It to you. 
I didn't are make any actual money. Actual scientific evidence, right? That booze keeps you in a lower, meaning not being able to connect with the best positive shit that you. One hundred percent. It's a world. depressant. Yes, big 100%, time depressant. One hundred percent. So if you want to like not be Next in level. your world, yeah. take a mushroom. Absolutely. Or but, uh, take a hit. Oh, yeah. Take, yeah like the booze, Eat a gummy. I think the sure. booze is done with. I think the booze is overrated. I think it's for sure. really but overrated. It's Our this weird accepted changes. vice. Yes. That a buddy of mine's from Africa. He came to America. It, he was blown away how casual everyone was drunk. Yes. The parents at the school. Yes. You know what I mean? And he was like, holy shit. Like, this is not happening in Senegal or wherever he's from. I probably got that wrong. Rwanda. There it is. Anyway. Yes. But he was blown away by how casually Americans were fucking pie-eyed. Yeah. And and it's it's our accepted vice. But I think we're accepting more vices like marijuana is on the but ballot. It's and more accepted. Oh, for sure. Booze is... At, you, you, there's even a deeper dive. I mean, I'm not trying to be like... I just needed a little caffeine and Coca-Cola... Doesn't taste as good as Captain Coke. I mean, that's just science fact. Yes. There's some serious vibrations in I Captain Morgan. I believe that booze <laughs> spiced vibrations. Jamie, I think I you... believe that booze spirits is a reason why. Jamie, I think you've said enough. I think we've <laughs> Oh, I, I disagree. I think you should ja- say more. No, 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 no. Hold on. <laughs> Jamie, I Jamie thought, you know, like that this was all a, a prank and everything, but yeah, it's what not a was prank. all a prank. Well, Chris, this is an intervention. Oh, thank you for not inviting my wife. She we are all here. Everything. Uh, Greg is going to send you away today. Oh, uh, thank you. We are going to. Can I have you. a queen size bed to myself? <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> That's this all I want. Yo, this is one of the best works ever. Like, I don't know. It could be. It might. It's a when little bit WWE, last... WWE, a little bit. Right. A little bit WWE. A little bit WWE. It's a work right now. I'm. I'm, I'm riding it. Transport guy. Yeah, okay. You can take him out no, to the center. When when was the last time you had your heart beating like that? It's kind of exciting. Well, I come mean, on. I well, I I wore. I took my mask off in Trader Joe's mid COVID. <laughs> <laughs> that's the last time. That's the last time you felt alive. <laughs> Dude, my life. I feel alive driving in the 101. Absolutely. Wait. So where are we at on the reality of this? Malibu. What's, where no? What is going uh, on? It's so he's the back. Episode. Is this episode two? It no four ninety nine C. I did four hundred ninety nine episodes. Started five hundred. Yeah. See, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. Please don't say anything bad. Listen, <laughs> I was talking to the director of Kimmel, and I'm like, he was like, "What's up, dude? I haven't seen him for a while." And he's like, "I'm like, remember, I used to be on that all the time. I was on it from like." O two to like ten. Yeah, you were I'm a like, favorite guest. Well, I was up. I was. I was like, hey, uh, uh, you know, so and so canceled. I was trying to make a reference, but you would have went deep on it. So, what's the name of the so and so canceled? Call Jamie. Else. Stop. Call Jamie. So, like, I used. To Does anybody do- have a COVID mask for Chris? <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, I felt like uh, I was like the good fill in. And I feel like I don't know where I was going. I lost my train of thought. But, what, like, but Kimmel, that's important. Kimmel. Kimmel. I feel like this right now is I'm the like that. All shows test me. So like I feel like I'm the tester now. But at least that one I was on ABC. No offense. Now I feel like this is <laughs> a tester. But network TV is dead. No, I want. No to come, one's watching live true. network TV. To be yes. honest, true. I wanted to come out with a bang. I thought let's let's do a really and good let's episode. talk deep. I don't like any bullshit. Okay, can we talk about my favorite film of yours? You could talk about life. You could talk about COVID. No, let's talk, talk about, about three. Let's talk about mushrooms. <laughs> no, I want to, I don't, I'm not a fan. Uh, what? No, I'm not a fan. You, have you done it? No. Then, what? Me, then oh, how can you not be a fan he doesn't know. if you don't even know, man? Booze or weed? I neither. Do you have? You don't? Okay. I don't really. I haven't done. I sometimes I smoke once in a blue moon, but I really. I know this is gonna. You might get this. I'm at this stage in my life. Where I've just been into like absorbing everything. I know that sounds so nerdy. I turned fifty yeah. this year, man. I get it, dude. It is. No, it's it's, like, a, it's a time you're one I with play, everything. Bro. I play a little bit more tennis. Yeah. pickleball. I, I was hoping yeah, you say pickleball. pickleball. Oh Jesus! This no, is, I'll play that. I'll this show's gonna do well with the senior season. I, <laughs> well, there's, there's a, something there's a about good just, version that you can release. You ever done jujitsu? People will no. talk about. It's good, man. But I think Sorry, it's probably God forbid. Good. It's nice. No, it's a good workout. It's an amazing workout. 
I just stop. think the world is so crazy right now. So yeah, it's it like, what's you want to I feel, I feel, so I feel start like the bridges, world right? is honestly not as crazy as we're all conditioned to think it is because we all have microscopes in our pockets and, you know, high definition cameras and editing thing. So anything that goes wrong, we're going to actually put on blast and we're going to think, holy fuck, the world is such a violent, horrible place. The world is actually a far more peaceful and loving place than it's ever been. I don't know. Genghis about that. Khan didn't just like ask, hey, may I take this land? Alexander the Great yep. didn't say, Chris, like, hey, Chris, he's not, hold on. He's let's not, do you're misinformation. You're, you're not, let's you're not, guys, let's use misinformation to conquest. That right thing the right West. there masturbates with VR goggles on. <laughs> yeah, it, the world is a better Have you done place. <laughs> The world's a better place. Have you ever uh, VR no. porn searched? I heard it's pretty intense. It's, it's pretty cool, cool, man. It's all right. Have you, have you tried flight attendants? Have you Googled uh, when you're in the VR porn flight attendants? They'll send flight attendants right over in 3D. They'll do whatever <laughs> never, you want. Never. Your dick looks different because it's not yours, really. Yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> no, that's not what I do. I've done it before. He tried to make that as a regular. I know. Like, like it's like my, Monday I don't have time for like what you're describing. Wait, you told us that that's every day I, after you no, do the you vacuum. No, you don't masturbate every day on VR porn. Just 21 times a month, minimum. Oh, so he's almost. He's worried about his day. prostate. Prostate health. <laughs> that's true, by the way. Yeah. It's absolutely true. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get your prostate out. Yeah, I do it. Well, I was I do, way ahead of the curve reasons. on that one. <laughs> Jamie, do you ever work with an actor that, like, genuinely intimidated you, where you're like, woo? Like, does, this isn't does the actor's studio. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, why did you switch it to that? We we're going to talk well, shit. I, mean, I want to talk shit. You guys are now no, in your 50s. No, you don't. Have you had your colonoscopy? And, can and back we me know up. he's you, the one person. We know you've watching. had polyps removed, so we can three get three polyps. To that. Three. No, it, it turns out they were inflammations. They weren't polyps. They were inflammations. Did you get your colonoscopy? I did it. I probably need another one. I did it when I was 42. So why you, you went early? Well, I thought it was supposed to go after 40. Now they say it's 45. But I, I, now I they're even saying you again, might not need it. Feel good. Yeah, now. Yeah, I know. That, dude, I saw that you article. Is reversed, I, I think so, too. It is, dude. Jason, did you get it's yours? It's cyclical. Everything Jason. Is a cycle. Jason. Did you get a polyp done? Not yet. No, Jason. I haven't had the, the did you sigmoidoscopy. Get, did you get your colonoscopy? Not yet. It's on the, Why not? Because I'm procrastinating on it. If it makes you feel any better, I got one, and then they said you got to come back and get a second one. So it's not that bad. Jason. <laughs> It was the fucking worst, dude. What, what, I had to get two colonoscopies. Hold on. What's your Venmo again? I I don't know. I think I got rid of Venmo, but no. What's the? But you with Joe? You were doing. Oh, well, what are you gonna call it? At <laughs> no, at fuck Joe. At fuck no, Joe is no, Jason's that's not Venmo. My Venmo. I think we, actually my name. It might if, be. At if Jason we can Howard. get enough money, would you get a live colonoscopy? No, I have insurance, dude. I don't need. No, I won't do that. I don't know. That I gotta that's go to good PTA podcasting. meetings and stuff, bro. Oh, Come on. Okay. I don't like, You'll be the star of the PTA meeting. Oh, I'm sure. Those guys really love the industry down there, too. Oh, do they hate it? They don't care. Wait, you just said you want to do a live colonoscopy, but you just said you jerk off the VR point 21 <laughs> times a month. Because of, I don't PTA. jerk off so the... So what do the PTAs accept, and what is their line? Okay, well, I talked about it, so that's up to you what is in your head, right? No, you said but I won't you jerked do... off 21 times a month. To VR porn. You don't? Not no. to VR porn. And you said that you can't do the colonoscopy because of PTAs. So no, no, no. PTAs, I'm not going to do a live colonoscopy. But you just outed yourself. Well, everybody masturbates. Not at the not PTA. everybody. Yeah. Well, I don't masturbate at the PTA. Well, not. now that you've been caught. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I've never, gonna, edit again. I've never been caught. <laughs> I've never been caught. Not at the PTA. I would have loved to have done the other episode. <laughs> Greg, you watched Did the other episode. Was the other face? episode better? It was different. <laughs> <laughs> and this dude's got an open collar. He's three buttons deep. Oh, dude, he's a, too much for This him. guy's the most this, interesting man in the this world. This is the most interesting yeah. man. He really <laughs> is. Stay thirsty. I, I, the, the conversations I've had with him. That, that's <laughs> him. Yo, am I in trouble, bro? No. I didn't do anything. No, no, no. you didn't do anything. Can we bro. stay Chris, on that again? No. Let's. You stood up, actually. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. were. Yeah. You're going to be the You'll hero. get my roles. You're going to be. <laughs> and my new show comes out on Friday, nominated for an Emmy. Drunk, <laughs> drunk gay hustler number three. <laughs> oh, my God. You know. Do you know that the only time I ever got booked in a movie, I'm I'm sitting if it was for a movie called Coyote Ugly, and I'm sitting waiting to hear 
uh, like when I'm getting my call times and everything. And uh, Godfrey calls me and he goes, hey, hey, aren't you in Coyote Ugly? I said, yeah. He goes, well, I'm on set right now. Where are you? And I go, well, we're not shooting the same day. And I called my agent. I go, hey, when do I shoot? And she goes, I'll call you back. I'm calling over the casting agents, everything. She calls back. She goes, oh, I have good news and bad news. The bad news is they double booked you. And I go, huh? She goes, the good news is uh, they're going to pay you. You're going to get paid. They're gonna, you're going to get paid like you're in the movie. But you're not in the movie. Oh, you, the movie. Got, you got cast out. Yeah, you know who they booked? No, oh. this is, I, mean, I don't know if this is... So, I mean, I don't know if that's no! accurate. No! I don't know that that's accurate. I don't know that that's accurate. I'm is that true? That. I think I remember you from that I was movie. in Coyote Ugly. Were you but... a drunk wild man? That's not a joke. <laughs> literally. I literally was. I literally was. So Coyote Ugly is it, a documentary. It warned us. Coyote Ugly warned us. Wow, I remember this. <laughs> Wait a minute, because you, you know, this I all hate, be different I hate right this now. term, so punch me in the face. But at that, you had a lot of heat. Yes. And I don't believe in heat, hot or cold. I just believe in good. And you, you're also very good. But Go on. We had the beginning of the pod <laughs> that we can never see. But what happened? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you, I remember that. So you, I remember you were in that. I do remember that. Yes. You were in a few things. Like yeah, I had, two, movies. I had two movies drop the same weekend, as did William Devane. So, me, I, <laughs> so I had two movies drop, Coyote Ugly and Space Cowboys. And William Devane arguably had a better weekend. He had Space Cowboys and Hollow Man. But I think Coyote Ugly had the most staying power out of all three of those. Do you remember Hollow Man was like Kevin Bacon's Hollow Invisible Man, was Man? big, but I think the weirdest thing is, why are you putting yourself in the William Devane category? So we both, <laughs> we both had two out. movies drop the same exact weekend. Is he at the and, ha-ha? And one movie. <laughs> right. So William Devane and I were in one of those movies together. I know, but he's the nude guy in Die Hard 2. Is oh, William Devane's nude and die? I just know he chews gum in everything he does. Yeah, I just saw him ch- uh, sell health insurance like at two a.m. I was, I was. Uh, yeah, well, you're, you're on, you're on, you're on dudes on dudes podcast, right? But he, yeah. That's you're just saying because you had two movies. The exact same, same weekends, August fourth, two thousand four, twenty. I'll never forget it. And William Devane had two movies. I had two movies, and apparently I stole the role of gay hustler number three from Eddie Ift. I was the drunk wild guy at the at the that's, party. Wow, that's cool. Did you? Would you guys know each other? I was at my agent's office when I he came walking. But I never I met like, him then. Oh, that's the guy that stole my. We wallet. met at a black movie audition. So have you ever been to a black movie audition where it's mostly black people, right? And then they cast a funny white guy in a in a black movie. Mm-hmm. So Eddie and I were the funny white guys that they were considering in a in a room in a lobby filled with black actors or blackers, as I like to call them. They. Uh, they all were very happy to see each other, knew each other, handshakes into hugs, et cetera. And Eddie and I were in the corner just like, that must be nice to have a friend you can hug and handshake. And that's kind of how we became friends. How do you think those guys felt their whole lives, And man? That, that happened to me again where I was auditioning to play Tattoo on Fantasy Island. No. I'm auditioning to play the Fantasy remake Island. of Fantasy Island. I'm sitting in a cast room, and I said to my agent, Tattoo is a little person. Little person. And like... Why? And they go, oh, but they're not going to do it. A little person for tattoo. They go, they're not doing it. Now they're doing it. They just, just want, they want a comedian. They want a comedian. So I'm sitting there and that's where I met Jay Davis at the audition. Jay Davis and I were sitting what there. What year was this? Like 15, 20 years ago. Well, that something. one didn't go. No, there so, was a new fan. No, now. this is it's like on 20 now. years oh, ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that so one I'm didn't sitting go. there yeah, talking horror, to Jay right? and we're having the same conversation. Like, isn't this weird? They called us in for to play tattoo, like the plane, really? the plane. And I go, yeah, they said they don't want a little person. We hear the casting directors laughing and going crazy and like, oh my God, you're amazing. You know, when you see that, like, yeah, before the door opens, door opens, Wee Man walks out. So they, they said that what they weren't going to do, Wee Man was there. Did yeah, you know? Wee Man's there and Wee Man just killed it. So did I get it. So I went in thinking I'm funny and I take my shoes off and kneel down on my shoes. Oh lord, like Dorf? <laughs> Dorf on golf. Only Jim Conway. Dorf reference. <laughs> and I did Dorf. You did on, Dorf? I did Dorf yeah, you thinking didn't get it. You thinking didn't get that it. they would think it was the funniest thing they've ever I seen. I just saw a real and little person. I know. And it was just So we I, man, my timing was worse than yours. We man used to live in Redondo Beach, <laughs> which is where I live. And my son was, I don't know, two years old at the time. You have a son? <laughs> Just like Christian God, just the one son. Wait, do you only have one kid? Yeah, one son. Married, no married. Uh, he's not married, no. He's only 12. You? Yeah, I'm married. Okay, okay, well. 
And I married uh, out of my class and out of my race. So everything's fine that I say. So, <laughs> so. What? He's two years old in Whole Foods what? in Redondo Beach. What race? I, I don't know. She knows. Her family knows. So <laughs> we're in Whole we're in Whole Foods, and I'm not in I'm not in Whole Foods. My wife is in Whole Foods. Still married. Still married. You're out of race wife. My out of race wife, and out of my class. I hit out, out outside of, of my class. weight class. Okay. So she's walking around Whole Foods, and we live in Redondo Beach. She's there with my two-year-old son. You live in Redondo. Yeah. Your life is doing Greg, good. Oh, it's Greg, amazing. are you okay over there? Uh, I saw Greg just take a big sigh. He just went. This poor guy is like captive. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like there's more captain? I feel like that. I feel like we've stuck him in the corner. He can't get <laughs> he doesn't out. Have to he doesn't even have a microphone. Out. No, I'm good. I'm all right. I'm good. <laughs> so my wife gets easily embarrassed, you know, what have you. And it's kind of cheeky that she married me. But anyway, she's in the Whole Foods. Wee Man walks by. My son is two years old. He immediately thinks Wee Man is magic. So he goes to my wife, that man's silly. He's magic. And my wife just starts, she literally ignores him. She walks away with her grocery cart and like just literally leaves, leaves him. Son? Leaves him. Because she was like, I mean, like he's two. I'm sure Wee Man has had many two year olds say, I've left, I left, you're my, a magic I left, man. I left my daughter on he's a, silly. I left my daughter on a, uh, uh, we were in kindergarten, online kindergarten, and I said the wrong thing, maybe. And on a may, Zoom may, kindergarten. On a Zoom kindergarten, I might have let something slip out that I shouldn't have said. <laughs> and I just went and just moved off the screen and just left my daughter. And my daughter's like, Dad. And I'm like, You're <laughs> like, like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And then I was like, What do I do? And so I just clamshelled the computer shut right. and text the school. And I'm like, Sorry, Wi Fi went down. Like, we don't know. We're having some difficulties. So here. we're going to join a new school. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Well, there was a guy that did that. I shouldn't talk about this happened here in Malibu. A guy, the first, when we were all just like doing online school when the pandemic first started, mm -hmm. some guy lost it on one of the teachers and just started cursing her out. During in kindergarten. The Zoom? With all the parents watching. Oh my God. And the kids. And all I knew was his name, first name, and that like he didn't show up day two. His kid was out of the school. Oh, I bet. Day two, gone. I, I, so, yeah, that's a wrap. Gone. Were, gone. Pa were oh, parents man. supposed to be? But they were all helping the kids because the kids yeah, didn't know what to do. And, right, and they're five. So, so day day two, this guy's gone, and everybody in Malibu's talking about it. I'm surfing one day, and my buddy brings a friend, and the guy's like tells me his name, and I'm like, and the name it doesn't hit me, but I just it's the same name as the guy that left. <laughs> and then afterwards, we're walking up the hill after surfing, and I go. Uh, I go, where do your kids go to school? He's like, uh, or he's like, where do your kids go? I tell me, he goes, oh, my kids went there. Yesterday. He goes, he goes, and then we switched to this other school. And I go, oh, why'd you switch? And he goes, I didn't like the way they were the first couple of days with the online. And I was like, I know this guy. Uh, I was like, you're the guy that everyone hey, have you knows about. you surfed with Jonah Hill yet? No, but he's out there every day. Where does he surf? Right here, third or at first point. He's getting, rel he's getting okay, right? Is he like a soft top guy? He's a soft. He's a hard okay. longboard guy. He just likes long, and I don't longboard. He's so. a he's like a soul surfer vibey guy. He's really into it. I know. And they, the the guy on Beach Creek gives him a lot of shit, and it's like the guy's passionate. How could you like go after? Well, there's who's two there's two theories something? on surfing. Like uh, the best surfer in the water is the one with the biggest smile on his face. Yeah. And then there's the best surfer in the water is the one who's best at surfing. Yeah. Well, he's he's not the second. Right, one. but but he's he's enjoying. He, he's got a smile. Yeah, I've seen yeah. his IG page, and he's like, it's all surf videos. Yeah, he's and really, I knew he was a local guy. I didn't yeah, know if you were out with he's, him. He's really into. It. No, I see. Uh, I see a lot of. I surf up at Little Doom a lot, and I see a lot of like celebrities. But uh, no, uh, we're doing a surf comedian contest. Maybe twenty minutes. Jesus Christ, that took forever. Twenty man. minutes. What does that, mean? that means that now we go into the paywall. So I'm trying to do. It's 20 minutes free. <laughs> and then it's we go into the paywall podcast. where they've got to pay for the show. So this is where we have to have a cliffhanger. So well, let's let's so start the, with the part the, that we deleted. The surf contest I'm having. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> we'll put that. How are you paying all these guys? <laughs> that that's the bell. Minute 20 is these guys get paid. <laughs> I don't get paid. <laughs> Are you lending him this place? Stay thirsty, my friends. No, just can't, tonight. We can't talk about our <laughs> Just ratio. tonight. There's investors, Jamie. There's no, there are There's aren't. NFTs. There's stock NFTs. options. NFTs? Are you an investor? 
Yeah. NFTs. You know how this works. If, oh you, my if God. you're on the show, the you're an investor show. now. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys own I a percentage we of the show. I thought we proved NFTs yes. didn't work. Jamie and Chris, I don't know if you know this, but you are now shareholders in the in the network you can marketing pay me, pyramid. You can, yeah, pay me in crypto exponentially, you're whatever a, you want. You're the owner of the company. Right. Thank you. Any lawsuits that you want to have, it's under Chris Chris Wilde's name. Right. Just go after Chris. Legally, I'm thinking of him. everybody that canceled before me. <laughs> I love that joke like, that Sarah Silverman has. Did they cancel because they were scared of the unpredictability? No. Uh, no. No, he just got bored of doing the show. He never got canceled. No, I'm talking about canceled. other people canceled. No. No, we had everybody. If you look at the list we've had on the yeah, show. Yeah, did. No, Everyone's I'm talking about the people that canceled him. Right? No, it, is it still the same as before? Is it? This is, is behind more... a paywall, guys. This is riveting. <laughs> Can you tell me? Can, we're supposed to have a cliffhanger here oh. to get people to listen. Oh, okay. Dude, okay. that whole first five minutes where everybody got upset. No, I can't use that. That's never to be seen again. <laughs> oh. I'm serious, I can't. <laughs> How yeah, many times have I been on the show where you, you had to edit you, every you, single you, thing you that I hear did? something worse yeah, than he did? definitely was I used to, I used to do the podcast with Jim Jeffries. We were partners on the show. Oh, God, so he's the Australian guy. Please don't say anything bad about one of the big greats. Who, Jim Jeffries? Yeah. So, so Jim, Jason, and Is I he I bigger now? Show. Is he big? He's a legend. He's a legend. Jim and I had a falling out. He's a game show host now. Jim and I had a falling out. We stopped Jim and I didn't have a falling out. Chris decides. I, I was. That's my second episode ever. He the decides, first episode, Jim was there, and he was the co-host. The second episode, Jim was no just, longer there. He's just a guest. Right. But he decides to throw his own show called Talking Shit about Talking Shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. First of all, I was on the show, and Jim wasn't, and I thought it would be a funny gag if I talked shit about the guy who wasn't oh, there so to talked. defend himself. So then Jim puts him on his sitcom. <laughs> I was recurring. I had, I had like a season Why? three. I had a big fucking arc. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's his they MO. Get, no, they, like, they get along. <laughs> Dude, I went to Jim Jeffries' house. So he's booked next week? Jamie, he's going to be in your next movie. <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys tight now? Oh, Jim? Yeah. yeah. Jim was my ride. Jim's at the McDonald's. He was the one, he was the one tendering you. He sent the dick pic. Jesus Christ. <laughs> More people. So, <laughs> so then I did the show. So More then, then I think the next time or two times later, I did the show, and Andy Ruther was a guest. And when he yeah. walked upstairs to go to the bathroom, I immediately talked shit about him again, boldly, when he wasn't there to defend himself. So as he leaves, I talk a lot of shit about Andy Ruther. You still do. Well, he's very slow. And then, so then he comes down, whatever, and I act like nothing happened. Let's talk about something else. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You guys talk about the He whole... has risen, brother. He has risen. Have you heard the news? The good news. He has risen. Do you have any Eddie... beds available in your rehab? <laughs> do you have mm, notes? Me, 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 me. Eddie, do you have notes? I don't, but what is that? Oh, 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 oh little town what, what does that mean? Just calm down. Uh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> That's amazing. Stay that thirsty, real? my friends. Yeah, Can I use that on my girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Jamie, who are you dating right now? That's like the, the ohm private. Oh my oh. God. Well, I, every time I've seen you out, you're a TMZ guy. Every time I've seen you, you're like David Spade. You are like you have elevens on your arm. Yes, every yes. When we did the show in the chapel. And I said some very dark things you weren't on stage for, and was probably for the best. I, I said a lot of weird things in that chapel. It was a chapel. It was a chapel. Why they had us on in a chapel, I'll never know. It was me, you, and who was the third? Gary Owen. Okay, Gary, okay. Gary so, okay. very funny guy. Yeah, he's awesome. And I remember, like, you, you go to me, you're like, because I started, right? And then I brought you on, and then I came back on, and then brought Gary on. And you're like, how long are you going to go? And I'm like, I, I honestly don't know. Let's just say 20 minutes. And then like 10 minutes on, I was like, I feel like now's a good time to stop. <laughs> and you were like, bro, you said fucking 20 minutes. And I was like, oh, I'll get 20 eventually. Anyway, I brought you on. You had a 12 with you that night in University of Redlands at the chapel. Really? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I love how you're acting like you don't remember. He doesn't I, yeah. remember. I, well, it was 2002. It was 20 fucking years ago. I appreciate that, that arithmetic. Yeah, I, uh, I brought a New Jersey eight. Wow. <laughs> That's not even a human. 
<laughs> his name was Paul. Uh, yeah, life has been good. I've been blessed. Uh, but um, it's 2022 and women have a voice. Oh, absolutely. So. I, I, personally, I think it's more important to hear their voice. That joke hit the shitter right there. Uh, <laughs> but wait. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Our life has been good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You were like the Eventually original. You to... were like the original Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> like, you were pulling in twenties. That's a compliment. I know. That's a compliment. You know what? And you don't have the butthole eyes. Best tweet I saw today was that we're, I'm convinced we live in a simulation. Yes. And Pete Davis has admin access. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever did that, brilliant. Uh, that was Yo, Elon Musk. I was thinking Pete today. Actually, Do you guys? That Pete was is, not Elon Musk. Pete is. Do you guys watch Yellowstone? Pete. Yes. Is, this is the second. So podcast. going back. So going back you, to being do, white. Do you watch? <laughs> Do you watch Yellowstone? No, but this is, you're the third person about this up today. Jason, you watch it? Hell yeah, that's good. But I know Jimmy. It's Jimmy is the Pete Davidson of Yellowstone. That's not Cole Hauser. Oh the, no, no, it's the 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 red haired dude. I gave up. There's on a red haired. He's like, like he's got issues. Cole Hauser is so red-haired. lovable and stuff. But he's like, yeah, he's lovable. But you love that character. But he's like, doesn't fit in with the Cowboys. He can't do what they do. He gets hurt all the time. And he's, meanwhile, he has women fighting over him. Like he's this lanky, dorky guy. Yeah. And the women, Jimmy. Are, yeah, and the who women plays are, him? Do you know? I don't know, but he got a spinoff. They're doing a whole yeah. series about him. Everybody's going to spin I heard they're, like they're building out the Yellowstone universe. It's yeah, there's like it's a, it's a ranch. Have they gotten to Yogi Bear being on that yet? And Boo Boo? Hey, Boo Boo. <laughs> it, is, it is creepy, though. I watched it last night. And I was like, why is this the number one show in America? And then I watched all the commercials, and they're all, you know, every commercial now Silverado. is multicultural. And, and it, right. all, it, this is just white men in every commercial. And I was like, oh, this is like... I see what's going on. This is like, you know, they're they're going for middle America. The oh, absolutely. Guys, like red South States. Dakota. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Th- that's a red state show. This is crazy. I, this is the second time I've heard this, that Yellowstone has commercials with only white people. Yes. This is crazy. <laughs> because this is no other show. They don't exist anymore. Yeah. This, well, I listen, we all we have to be inclusive. But I do see a little bit sometimes of overreach when you see like a schlubby, fat, <laughs> like um, – uh, White. Yeah, but what's that? What's that place? Uh, not Second City. What's the other one? Growlings. No, the other one. Uh, Improv Olympic. No, the other one. Uh, oh God. Yes, and no, the the Saturday Night Live. No, there's like a... I feel like I'm playing. It's like password. an improv school. You said everyone, but but like you... Stella Adler. Oh, no. Upright Citizen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 Upright. Oh, the so UCB. Like, there's like uh. some dude from like UBC, UBC, and then UPC code. and then he's like with a super hot black chick. Right, and it's like for progressive. I'm like, mm, I don't know if this. I, three years ago, you weren't seeing that. Like no. she's out of his league, and it's like they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have dated. So I see what you're yes. saying in the commercial stuff. But anyway, probably get in trouble. But the com- <laughs> you won't get in Dude, trouble. Here's the deal. No, no one, one is listening. Your podcast. No, no one is listening. My podcast. No, my podcast. No one is listening. About my beliefs. Yes. <laughs> and I talk about. Do you think I say things that get me in trouble? Yes. What do I say? Yes. No yes. one you are cares tri- about. You're incredibly opinionated. No, but he's incredibly opinionated. You, uh, you, you. All, I guarantee you get half your comments are like you, so, Jamie, I'm, uh, and the other half are like, I, can, you, who were the people that part were of the changed. patriarch? Yeah, you've changed. Yeah. Who were the people that were canceled on a podcast in the past month? Kanye West, right? He went on a podcast. And no. got Is that where he did it? Oh yeah, yeah was he was on, on Beer Champs or something yeah. or Drink yeah. Drink Champs. Drink Drink yeah. Champs. So Kanye West. Who we all? Who's a household name? With all and you respect. didn't get that canceled. You just lost a billion dollars. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That I don't think that at the fucking twenty minute bell, the people that paid for this no, no, are going. Oh, I can't wait to cancel the guy hold who on. didn't speak all episode. Hold on, hold on a second. <laughs> it's not about that. It's about he's a living example of a clip. Of a guy that's been canceled forever. But who? Me. No. <laughs> <laughs> you were canceled because you're not talented. I was canceled before I even started. No, no you cancel <laughs> every audition. You cancel yourself so you open your mouth. They'll pull out a clip of something out of context so, and it'll be and it'll be done. Brad? What? No, who did you 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 have a he has a clip? No, you weren't canceled because of a clip of anything. No, Brad got canceled because of me. And Brad I didn't Williams. Mean to. Yeah. Listen, all I'm gonna say is this is that I am put. I, I only. I say only things that I believe I have receipts for. And right. I'm half. Listen, I'm half in Hollywood still. Sure. 
but I'm also half in the comedy community, well, more in the comedy community, which is in Hollywood, but is also balls to the wall. Okay. I sure. believe that we are, the comedy community is the last people pushing about, you know, what they believe. They're not scared to say. What, what is the and first amendment again? The very first one. Freedom of speech. There you go. But the situation is, is it, if you're making 150000 or something like that, people don't want to lose their bag. And the problem is the tiniest little bit of issues pulls it away. So I understand people not saying stuff, protecting stuff. There's overreach. So that, but listen, are people giving me big bags right now? No, but right. I still have bags I can grab. That's all. Sure. But I say stuff that I believe I can back up. But I am very opinionated. But you're not going into a crowded theater yelling fire. But that's, but. You just that, did. No, no I didn't. That's like no. a government stage. class. No, I didn't. Like, you guys deleted it. Like no stage, one will ever fucking no, hear it or see the it. The stage is the last place we can see it. And even then, the okay. phones. I believe I was one of the first people to talk about in town at a club. I said, yo, use those yonder bags. And they somehow Yonder helped. bags? Yeah, the yonder bag. You know what they, 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 they take, take your, your phone, phone and put it in a bag. And oh. It. Yeah. Which, by the way, I've even given over to it. If people are going to, I don't say anything on stage that I wouldn't say. So, right. Because everyone's going to film it. Yeah. So you just have to live with it. And I, I need to say controversial stuff. But. Because no one's listening. No, you, but, be, you dip your toes in it. You don't say anything controversial, but, bro. You do a fucking wadcast go, about uh, fucking wadcast. pushing tires or something, right? Don't you lift weights with tires? Yeah, I do. Listen, <laughs> the crazy What's thing that, that you though? said here uh, is that we played a college, a chapel, twenty years ago. Yes, sir. When's the last time we played a college? I don't play. I don't. I don't leave to do stand up anymore. Okay. Well, okay. The last college I played was eight years ago. Yeah, nice. I was the same. Dicey I then. To, oh, sure. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Oh, and college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was bread and butter all day. Yeah, yeah. I remember we you and like that one you hosted. I middled Gary Headline. Yes, sir. There's times when I had I I hosted Jeff Ross middled Bob Saga Headline. Like all different types. We yes. would go out in groups. Super fun. None of us ever. No, I don't think could ever do that again. I did. No. Right I did a hundred colleges a year. Yeah. Ah! Hundred a year. Back in the day, I was like that was my thing. Clean? No, no I wasn't. Clean. No, no, no. I would no. go to the NACA. You didn't need I, to be clean I, at college. Uh, no, you did. I would go to the NACA. I was clean at the NACA to get the booking. I'd get the booking. I'd go to the school and I would say, "Hey, what do you want for material?" Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, they say, "Do whatever you want." I go into one show, Scranton University. <laughs> my old Scranton name. University. Are you from Pennsylvania? Scranton, Philly. Scranton, South Jersey. The name Scranton University. Does that? Have any religious connotation? Not at all. No. Scranton. I, I'm late it's to the where show. where the office is. Yeah. I'm late to the show. I don't know that anything about the school. I come in through the back door. They show me how to come in. I go onto the stage. I perform my act. At one point, a bunch of kids got up and started walking out. Oh. So they were watching. I did. Yeah. I did a joke about the Pope. And I won't repeat the joke. It's a long joke. But they all walk out. And uh, after the show... Well, there, there was like, I, I said, what, what's wrong? And they're like, uh, I'm like, why are you guys like, what's the problem? And somebody points above me. There's a picture of the Pope. I turn around. There's a cross hanging uh, above me and I'm in like a chapel. And I didn't know it was a chapel. And I go, this is a religious Scranton. And they go, it's Jesuit. And oh, Jesuits are like super Catholic right. or whatever it is. And like uh, Jewish Christian. But I got off stage and there were still a whole bunch of kids taking pictures and asking for autographs and but they wouldn't pay me. They refused what? to pay me. And they said one Pope joke, one Pope joke. And they the Jesuits said, aren't even Catholics. Yeah, and they were like, and they wrote to NACA and all this stuff about me. You know, he did this, he did that. And it was like the only, I only one time had another bad review. And I've talked about this on the show before, but I, I one time hooked up with a student. I was like 26 years old. What was his name? Do you remember? Phil. And, uh, at, it, you weren't allowed. Remember Delete that was kind of <laughs> the pro, the, Jamie. The problem I was she was a fucking PhD. The problem was he was playing in elementary school. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Phil no. was a very mature third grader. I would say oh, shit this episode, man. Yeah, that's why I've been listening. Watching, just watching this Wait a minute. all go I down don't, in front of me. I don't always do podcasts, but what, <laughs> what I do, I, do. <laughs> I make sure to do the one that just ruined my life. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you're like, come to Malibu. It's supposed to be chill. <laughs> Dude, you brought a fucking atom bomb. I know, bro. 
Malibu's most wanted. Right. I'm I know. Malibu's most I'm so, now apparently the world's most wanted. So, so, no, Least no. wanted. But hold on. Back that there was no rule. I'm 26 years old. I meet a 21 year old girl. There's nothing wrong. Yeah, right. No, you're fine. Exactly. The funny part of the story is that oh, I look up with her, but she, she, years later, I'm Googling my name as I do. And there's Daddy, a, there's a, sense. there's a NACA <laughs> review. There's a NACA review of my shows. And I'm getting trash for the show. And I'm like, where's the show? And I look, and it's Shippensburg College. And I'm like, <laughs> and I look down, and I'm like, I read the girl's name that wrote. It's her. It's the girl I hooked up with. She's reviewing your hookup. <laughs> and I, I still have her phone number. I text her, and I go, hey, I just read the review you wrote about me eight years ago. I go, it was really bad. I go, we hooked up. She goes, we did, but your show was terrible. Oh, you're a very, you're a very good stand-up comedian. You're like a fucking duck and water wow. at stand-up comedy. Fuck her, dude. So what happened? She, uh, she didn't get a second hookup. No, no. She no. can take a dick, but no. she can't take a joke. <laughs> and not much of a dick. Can we talk? Since we're in Malibu, let's talk Malibu Most Wanted. Great transition. Did you shoot? Did you shoot any of that in real Malibu? Yeah, I was just literally driving over here going. I, I remember this route. I used to take it for every day for eight weeks. Well, that's, that's how I suckered you in. I thought it'd be nostalgic, and you'd be like, a I super nostalgic. It was, yeah, it was like literally that hall where Ralph's is, that whole shopping center. That was my spot. And then there's a big house. It's crazy because where we're at is Malibu, and I was like thinking about. I know people that own certain houses, and I know I'm thinking how much that shack was worth. And now it's right, worth, yeah. And so our house was up kind of on the way to Zuma, which is super crazy houses. Mm. And so, I don't know if I can say this, but I'll say it, but we shot an incredible house that was owned by the Herbalife guy. Oh. And he had died, and I believe his wife owned it, but I never met her, Darcy Lapeer. And she like has this amazing compound up there, and that's where we shot it. But... Uh, did you and Swartzen write that together? It was, well, I had a character. I kept doing the character on stage. And then, and like, I kept adding jokes to it. And then I went to Tempe Improv. And it was, like, one of my first middling gigs, right? So I wasn't even headlining. So it was it, it was Heath Heitch. Do you know who that Yeah, is? I know Heath. Heath was Leaf Blower Heath. Heat leaf blower Heath. Why are you call me blower Heath? He used to take the leaf blower and put it in his mouth and make his cheeks blow. Oh, up. He, yeah, he and had. They didn't a lot give of, him a sitcom. <laughs> they he did. <laughs> he, <laughs> from he, he had. Well, he had a Leafy. bit where he put people on and yeah, he danced did, like, and so Top Gun. He would do the Top yeah, Gun fighter pilot thing. He had. A, yeah. So he's funny. Where is he? I don't know. I haven't seen him forever. But this was like '98, and I was Tempe, and it was just packed, and it was like a different time, even before like DVDs were were popping, and. I go on and they're like, yo, this is Nick. He's he's uh, gonna host. I'm like, what's up, dude? He's like, what's up, bro? Oh and the God, guy Swartz goes on, and I'm all, I've got like a I'm doing twenty, but I've got like maybe a eight and a strong two of the eight. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm relying a lot on my fucking fame at the moment. And Nick goes on, and within three minutes, he's like, he does so I forget some his bit where he does uh, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, like, he's like, the I buy a fucking valve pack. <laughs> <laughs> and he just fucking and the place is like, like people are floating in the air, dying laughing. I'm like, oh. so I go out, I do okay, and then he watches me and he's like, let's go have a drink. So we go. <laughs> whoa, wait, whoa, 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 you know whoa, 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 whoa. So there's no way I Nick am. said that. He so said, let's we, go have twelve drinks. <laughs> <laughs> so we go, and then he's like, I got an idea, and then. Every day he gave me a new joke for the bit. Each one killed better. Oh, and so then good. he was like, "Hey, I think I can. You want to write a movie for your character?" And I was like, "Yeah, I, I, I told him I wanted to." And then one, he would come over to my house. I had Donkey Kong, so he would come over and play it. And he would write like three pages on like literally like and mead. Written. And I'm like, "This is hilarious." He wrote another three. So he like wrote like ten pages that are like brilliant. I'm like, "Dude, let's make this a reality." And so that's how it started. And he oh. wrote. It. Like all the time, and then you know, I'd give him notes, but it was awesome. That's how it happened. But like the naturalness of the whole meeting, and the you don't do Tempe, you don't do Malibu's Most Wanted. I low key, I don't know, right? I really don't. Like, he, I'd I started working with him a lot. We just started going and 
being in each other's universes. I did late Friday. Remember that show? You I did that a, show. Yeah, you would do a spot or and they had a fake audience. Yeah, I did that. I did it with Fred, him, him, and we they, did a bunch they of cast TV spots. the audience. Premium sure. blend, I would do. Yeah. So those helped, but yeah, if I don't do that, I didn't meet Nick. I wouldn't have probably got. I knew Nick in New York. He came to New York from Minneapolis. And everybody, I was like the youngest kid doing stand up in New York, like running around. Like I was like 25 years old at all the clubs. And, and all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, this young kid that's going to. And then all of a sudden, Nick showed up and they were like, can you get out of the way of oh, Nick yeah. Swartzen? Mm-hmm. And he just like, within a week, everybody knew who Nick was. Of course. Yeah. I mean, he just came in like burning down stages. Yeah. I, so I, down. The first time I fell in love with Nick was that Wheel of Fortune joke. He did yeah, it on right. like the show that was on after Saturday Night Live. After the Apollo, yeah, was hosted was, by Louis that Anderson. Late, that was late Friday, wasn't it? Well, in, in my market, oh no, I know that one. In my the, market, it, it was on Saturday. It was on Sunday morning at like two thirty in the that morning. Show. Yeah, and he did the whole thing about like my dad could never be on Wheel of Fortune because he would cheat. Yeah, and I was like on the floor, and I I met him at an audition. I was like, Jesus Christ, man! <laughs> and I said like that joke fucking killed me. He's like, I can't remember, you, I can't believe you remember that joke. So anyway, he had a Comedy Central show, Nick Nick's Pretend Time pretend or whatever. Time, yeah. He asked me to do a gag, and I was like, yes, I'm in. And he's like, okay, well, we're doing it Tuesday. I was like, ah, dude, I'm, I, I booked a commercial, so I'm like, I'm, I'm, they own me all day Tuesday, but I'm available Wednesday. He's like, ah, don't worry, we'll do the next one. I go, okay. So weeks later, I don't remember the first gag, but I remember the second gag, Swiss Army Dildo. And you're going camping, and the Swiss Army dildo has everything you need to survive. <laughs> I remember this. Yeah. Is a good one. And so he's like, dude, he's like, we can film it next week, any day. Just pick a day. You are the Swiss Army dildo. And I was like, Dah, I'm on a fucking the, the, the opposite of that, a Disney sitcom for children. And they own me all week. I, I, I'm not available that week. And he's like, oh, okay, well, don't worry. We'll, do, we'll figure out the next one. You should have skipped the Disney thing. Well... So the next one was a web series for McGee where he was like a Keystone cop, like FBI agent. And he had a partner and he handpicked me to be his partner. And because of that gig, I became McGee's boy. And then I booked the Duff, the babysitter, the babysitter killer queen. When we first met, like I booked all these fucking movies because swords in the number one Netflix. Enjoy your fucking paywall, bitch. Anyway, uh, <laughs> ring the bell. See if you can fucking make your wife happy. Anyway, so, so but fucking Swords and handed that to me on a fucking silver platter. Because you were the Swiss Army dildo. Because I couldn't, I, I, I said no to Swiss Army dildo. And then he gave me this thing. And like, I, every time I'm on a set with McGee, I text Nick. I was like, I'm fucking here because of you, bro. I love you, man. And then I remind him why. And then, and then we laugh about it. But literally every time I'm on a set with McGee, I text Nick and I thank him because it's all because of him. Pass that bottle of Morgan. I mean, it seems like you're doing a lot of you're doing a lot of work. I I'm waiting for a callback from McGee for the first Charlie's Angels. I should have been in that movie. What do man. I fucking know? I should have been in Plays that movie. the whole goddamn business. Burn it to the ground. It works. It works Fuck for it. him. We'll do it it works for him. Fuck it. There's collateral damage when you're, you're around. Gonna them, go after it works for fucking flappers. <laughs> Swartzen and I used to hang out in New York City all the time when he was first when we first were coming yeah, he's up. He's like 20 years old. Yeah, right? we were we were both really young, like in New York, having fun. And I thought Nick's so funny. I thought he'd like I like pranks a little bit. And I thought uh-uh. there was this comedian. I'm not going to say his name. He's a very nice guy, but this guy used to write letters to everyone in crayon. No. Like, you would get letters and crayon that he would send. And he would do stage time. Yeah, yeah. And he was really funny, but it was funny. Like, you you almost felt like you were taking advantage of him, putting him on stage. But he would, if he got your phone number, you got all these phone calls. And they were the same phone call and everything. And so, I don't know why, but one day I said to him, you know who thinks you're really funny is this guy, Nick Swartzen. And I gave him Nick's number. Right. How long were they married? And... (laughs) But so I, Nick flew him to Boca Raton. So I gave him Nick's number and he starts calling Nick constantly. And Nick's at the cellar one night and we're all sitting around and Nick's like really angry right. and complaining about these phone calls and everybody gets them. And I'm thinking, everybody thinks they're funny. Like right. they're funny. You, we all talk about the call. Nick's so angry and I'm giggling. Cause and you he, did it. And he just looks at me and he goes, was it you? 
was it was it you? Did you give him my fucking number? And I could I can't I was like <laughs> and he goes, fuck you, fuck. And he didn't speak to me for like two years. Wow. Crazy. Crazy. He was so That's why upset. I didn't get the coyote ugly gig. That's exactly why. Wow. <laughs> I didn't hear That's, this drama. Yeah. But like I brought it up to Nick and he's like, I don't even remember that. And I'm like, you were so fucking you mad. Didn't the guy like had Asperger's or something? Like the crayon person? The crayon person. Wait, it was so funny. You didn't see him now. Are you guys cool? Yeah, we're really cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. We had one of the greatest talking shit episodes ever with Yeah, Nick Nick's and, awesome, man. Wow. Yeah, that was the night that uh well Lachlan didn't compete with me me and was who all went you went with us didn't you yeah I've, I've been on the show with Nick we went to a gay bar to uh see who would get picked up first it was a contest we had all the guys on the did show. you record it at the gay bar we did the show then we left to the gay bar I think I was there and Lachlan said I'm out we said why he goes out oh, it's too win. easy for Lachlan, Lachlan goes, you'll, kidding lo- me? you'll lose in the parking lot yeah yeah and Lachlan... we were like okay you're out so we go and we're walking into the gay bar, the rooster fish on uh, Abikini. On Abikini. It's gone. And as I'm walking in the door, I just take my shirt off. <laughs> and this big, tall, really good looking black guy just goes, You're with me. <laughs> <laughs> and how long did you guys get married? You got for? booked there quicker than that. <laughs> And, wow. uh, and we had a really good time that, that like uh, all our drinks were paid for yeah and uh we left i remember do you machete you were with us right yeah, yeah that was yeah. a good night that place it, is a gone cool table machete's place. still going there trying to win he says that he's really sad about it it's it was gone. a legendary it was like rooster, uh, uh, rooster fish was legend post, dude. Post-COVID gone? no it was uh it was gentro gone abikini yeah, abikini's like real yeah. estate went through the roof and they yeah, couldn't pay they the got gentrified out of there it was it, but it then was covid a... kind of humbled abikini did it? I haven't like been through there. Yeah, I haven't gone through there in yeah. years. You couldn't man. even walk on the sidewalk. People had to walk their dogs on the middle of the street because it was like it, it was a homeless shanty town, Abbott Kinney, which was this like yeah. the coolest rent. street in America. Now it's yeah. the best camping spot in uh, yeah. urban camping is yeah. really taken off yeah. in LA. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? They got like KOA down there, right? Uh huh. Yeah. What year did you start? R-E-I. Stand up. Wait, can I comment on that? Yeah, go ahead. There's a new thing happening today. So I'm driving up Highland. And, you know, there's blocks, as you know. Yes. And, you know, like from like five to seven, how you can't park because it's traffic. Street, yes, yes. Now a lane. There was two tents on high. The street. Half of the street. So let's say a half of a lane. And I'm like waiting for them. And they're like just doing their thing, like keeping the stuff there. And they're not moving. So the whole traffic. So they didn't move from five to seven. No, they're moving in. <laughs> they're, they took the sidewalk. It's extended. Oh, god! I mean, dude. You I, remember that fucking hot tub place on Highland? There was a hot tub. Pl- it was always on Blind Date. The end of every episode of Blind Date would of. end at this hot tub place on Highland, south of Third. It was I can't remember what it was called, but every time I passed, I know I, what I, you're I, I got skiddy. No, it was like a float. I know they had they saying. had individual. You know how like yes. you go to karaoke and there's a room for saying. karaoke. Yes. There was a room for hot tubs, and every room had a different hot tub. What the fuck? Every what? episode of Blind Date. That's where I met my eleven. Blind Date. Well, That's what we're gonna do here, right, Craig? We're gonna turn this into a hot tub place. <laughs> dude, I would be in rehab Wait. if there were hot tubs. I would do rehab. I, like, dude, I'd I, bring the sweetest drugs to rehab if I knew there were hot tubs. I. During COVID, I thought about going to rehab just because it was they're nicer. Because your wife house. wouldn't be there. Because <laughs> yeah. your wife and kids yeah. won't be but the there. houses. When you see these rehab houses, the house, you don't really party, right? Like you, like no, I've never been. I was when I was younger. I was probably a big partier, like but alcohol. That was but fucking forty years yeah, ago, I don't, I don't do. You've been anymore. young since the nineties. I don't have more than one drink in in a week. Why do you drink in a week? Like what? Why? I'll, I'll drink one drink. What will you drink? whatever like a beer something that your wife is drinking or something yeah like i'll have a glass of wine with her is it socially or with her i every time i have it i'm like that didn't even taste good i would have rather <laughs> had something else I, bong uh, rip yeah no harder or, to, or vape harder to explain to the kids don't vape you vape yeah that's just cbds yeah, no CBD. you don't you do 18 I, to 1 no i, I go the, crazy on vapors i do the 18 to 1 cbd well, with uh, vape pens make me sneeze. sneeze. I get all congested in it my sneeze. Bo- no, it's oh. vape. It's like if, if it's like it's a clean, I don't think it's healthy. Super clean. Yeah, like ice extracted. Eight ingredients, yeah. maybe. 
But like the terms of vapors for cigarettes and stuff. No, 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 no. Pop no, he's just doing no, weed. No, no, not, not I think the guy. No, I think no, no. The guy weed. next to you is kind of an expert. Yeah, he he just affirmed no. my choice. Did he? Yeah, I, I I don't get for for whatever reason I didn't like because you know when we used to do talking shit, I would get blacked out on the show like often. And then we would drink afterward. It was. I watched you do cocaine for the first time. He got a cocaine. I never. Habit. Yeah. He got a cocaine habit in his late forties. Well, it wasn't even on a the habit. show. Yeah. I did it like three times in my life. On like, the show. Yeah. He did With it Jim. on the show. I was telling him not to and do those it. Those guys. I was telling him not to do it. Wait. He, so it was a bunch did, of dudes. We're doing the podcast. No, it was similar to this. <laughs> no, the old the old show this. was a mixed crew. We had all kinds of people. No, there, there were were no, no dudes elite there. was there. There were no dudes there. Elite was there. It was me. Jason, it's how we, no, not this night. Oh, I told this an example, right? I told this story a million times. We had done two episodes. Are we uncanceled yet? No, we we had done, that should be a good channel, the canceled channel. And we just do shows. We did two, two episodes of talking shit. And Jim and I were living together. We did the show. Jason was our sidekick machete. We had just met, we had just met him. This guy from England that has the number one song in the UK called example, example. He's a messages star. us and he's like i'm a huge fan of your show i listen to the first two i love it i'm in america i want to meet you guys okay and i'm like J- Jim's well jim and him had done shows they no, knew each other no no you're wrong they hosted he, a show together no, in the uk knew, but he knew jim's what comment. happened all right we go to meet this guy to cocaine bar. we go to meet this guy to <laughs> bar we're drinking he goes we should record an episode right now at the bar so we go we'll we'll call our guy our sound engineer this is in 2011 yeah. we're like we'll call our guy and see if he'll come to our house it's two in the morning we've been drink. we go we'll see if he'll come do it so we go i call him i've probably talked to him twice on the phone i go hey ernie uh can you come over it's two in the morning can you come record a podcast he goes sure and i go example goes see if he can get cocaine and, I go, <laughs> and ernie and says I go, sure i go ernie can you get cocaine and he goes sure, sure. and he shows up <laughs> he shows up he sets up the recording the cocaine everything we're doing the show and jason who's never done cocaine Jimmy. 41 years old or whatever goes i'll do it and I'm like, Jason, don't do this. Don't. I was curious. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. I read so my uncles were like, it's one of your cocaine. best features. How so, curious so you he, are. So he does the cocaine, and the video's still on YouTube. If you just Google Jim Jeffries and example, punch Jason in the face. He's going, but Whoa, it's not. You got hold on. In the face hold the first on. Time you did blow? Hold on. He asked for it. He was going. I don't know. I feel so strong right now. <laughs> He's going, go ahead and just hit me. Who hit you first, Jim? Right. Jim, Jim hit him in the face, an example, in the stomach. At the uh, Look, we can pull it up right now. It right it's now. okay. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's okay. It's hilarious. Wait a minute. So you ended up trying a bump at 2 a.m. with a bunch of dudes. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it was a lot. To be fair, it was... Uh, <laughs> One of the biggest comedians in the business, yeah, and a big pop star from the UK. I figure, yeah, if I want to be doing cocaine, <laughs> that's true. Right, okay, right. this no, is probably right. a good time to do yeah, it. Yeah, actually, right? that's a good yeah. time. Yeah, you're correct. Especially actually. if I died, you're correct. Because right. then I'm like in the pages, you know. <laughs> no, that's but, your moment. Like, like as, that's a famous death right there, man. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's a good. That's a good group. I didn't know the other guy was. You're right. I forgot. Jim was there. It's like and the pop. it's international. No, that's, a, that's a good fame. Class. If I Jim, died. Wow. Look at how yeah. much Look at how younger, younger I am. Jason. Oh my God. Yeah. The body doesn't even hurt. Yeah. That's example shirt on me, by the way, too. We traded shirts in the middle of it. I don't know. Oh man. Ow. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. Whoa, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine's a now hell of a drug. Well, I always felt because no, you you corrected me. You're correct. Like, like you ever do like uh, like uh, I don't know. Fucking you do a anal. <laughs> you do like Toledo, and there's always the one dude, and then that comes to the show. It's like want to party, right? Hey, party? <laughs> right. And right. it's like him and like four of his friends, and I'm like, yeah, bro, let me get around a hot tub with you and four dudes, <laughs> and do a bunch of bro cane yeah. in fucking Toledo, yeah. like. <laughs> Like <laughs> until we're hitting each other in the jaw. Like I've been to the Oscars. Like I don't. Like, I, 
I didn't even do a bump at Vanity Fair. Like, yeah. I'm going to do one in Toledo. Like, but that's what you should do. You know? I, mean, I, I think it was a good, I think it was an all right choice. Yeah, yeah, you know, that was your, share, that say, was your hey, Oscars, you know? Jason. That was my Oscars. <laughs> right there. I get it. You know, yeah. Grammys, sure. But, <laughs> oh, Grammys, but, you do cocaine. Yeah, you, absolutely. It's the appetizers. But you, <laughs> you tried it, so it's interesting. And this, it was this cool. That's what it was. a lot of levels. It's <laughs> because it's, okay. I like it. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> He's back. Should I we start the show? My, I think you're a regular. I think you're a regular on the show. Here's the thing is I got to, we got to make money. This is the only thing we're going to have left, by the way. Like fucking podcasts. Gotta, well. No, we'll always have animation. True. That's, by the way, 100,000% true. And let me test your knowledge. You know what Crunchyroll is? I'm sorry, again? Crunchyroll? Yeah. Uh-huh. Anime. And they just got bought. Oh, really? I think for $2 billion yeah. by Amazon. Wow. Crazy. And so our world is completely what I call uh, fragmented, super fragmented. They're releasing movies in theaters, and it's making like, you know, $10 million bucks. Yes. Well, I mean, some Anime movies? movies? Yeah, yeah. Crunchyroll specifically. But yeah, oh, yeah, Crunchyroll is. But like, so yeah, I believe we're all... I never traditional wa- media is getting so splintered that I ha- believe this is... No have you, have you TV, been a Philadelphia sure. guy, have you been on Always Sunny in Philadelphia at all? Never. I never watched it until recently. I just started watching. I was stuck somewhere and I was like, I never watched the show. I'm going to try it. I started watching it. I'm like, how yeah, do they, they just... get away? Well, it was with... 20 years ago. No, they're still doing the show. Yeah, but the episodes you're watching that I were watched... controversial were 20 years ago. Episodes. Oh, they're not the newer ones? I don't, they don't... I don't think they're like the the prom. Prom. It's like, insane. I, mean, I watched the four episodes like early on hilarious like i have to, i really want to binge the whole show it's really funny well, there's right? a lot of episodes for you to they watch. make jokes no one else would ever make yeah really? no one but that but it was they like they south popped south during level. a shock jock they, they popped humans. during a shocking time you with humans because south park i feel gets away with it because it's a it's cartoon. cartoon right so you're saying humans. With no humans. they get away with it because they have danny devito yeah i was gonna say it's danny devito that keeps him out of jail but yes why because he's because he's untouchable he's a living legend yeah he's untouchable you dude, you should see his cartoon. It's the most shocking thing I've ever seen in my life. Little Demon. I, I watched that I show. And I was like, oh my he's god. In the, he's been in the, the top layer of the cake seen. since the 70s. I don't believe though. in cans. I think you just keep doing what you do. I, I, I no, I'm with you. Corolla said it to me once. He goes, Don't he goes, if you don't blow up your balloon, they can't pop it. And he goes, just you don't you don't act like you're something that you're not. You don't and you just if you just say this is always be transparent, tell them what you are, yeah. and they just can't get you. Don't he used to eat. put poop in his friend's ears, too, that guy. Corolla? What? Yeah, remember that story he told about smacking poop in his ear? No, but he did tell us about the enemas at the hot tub, oh which is God. the funniest is crazy. thing in the world. He's got, he's wilder than anybody I've met. Yeah, man. Corolla has really good, funny, like, high school stories. Like, he's a, Wow. Yeah, they used to go sneak into this hot tub place and stick their buttholes over the jets <laughs> and just have, <laughs> just have water shot up their ass, and then they would go to, like, a drive through window. <laughs> And like, fart? Like shoot the water out there. Oh my god! Shoot the they, hot no, tub water. No, his his Jesus his Christ. his friends. So are, he might are, be elected for Congress. Yeah, <laughs> like that the, the stuff that his friends did. I mean, he's probably the only <laughs> living one left. I I agree that cancel culture is bullshit. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm Jimmy still Kimmel's a bit of a bitch, but Jimmy I'm Kimmel's hosting the Oscars. There's literally footage of him in blackface. Like it's I could bring it up. You can watch Jimmy Kimmel do blackface. Jimmy used to have the darkest sense of humor of anyone I knew. Mm-hmm. Like, he used to he used to send me videos of stuff and clips of stuff that, like, I'd be like, because I would try to, like, top him and send it back to him. Mm-hmm. And, I don't know. You and, can't top him. But not anymore. He's well, not going to. No, he's not going to answer your calls at this point. <laughs> he's literally hosting that's, the Oscars. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with all due respect. Yeah, I don't play ball. But, but and that's, and I love that, that someone from our realm of crazy comedy is doing that oh 100 but i do believe like you're saying that traditional media is just so disruptive and i don't know if regular people there's tiktokers with 15 million subscribers you never heard of that are killing it and sure. whether you care about them or not somebody does and so that's why i think the whole but i don't think that you'll ever i don't think you'll absolutely. ever go to top gun 3 starring a fucking tiktoker oh uh, you will not i agree with you you know what I mean? That They're, one dude's in the WWE now, though. That, get, but the, that's good because oh, Logan that, Paul. But Logan Paul. Less, he was. A, but, I, but, but, a all, lot, but all those guys. I was in a movie. There's with Logan a lot Paul. less hits though. Top Gun was few and far between. Movies are hot and cold, don't you think? Well, I, I mean, I think what I was, what I've been reading is like the even the streaming services are like we need movie theaters 
to promote these movies yeah. to make our streaming services that much more yep. desirable. Mm. So everyone, you know, the the streaming service that has Top Gun, the big movie of the year, whatever. But at the end of the day, like it's a shared experience, a movie. And yes, you can watch yes. it on your phone, but it's not as good to see them cut out Kelly McGillis's memory on your phone when you can go on the big screen right. on IMAX no, you're right. and watch them somehow creatively cut Kelly McGillis completely out of all the flashback scenes. I had watched Top Why Gun 1. Why did they cut her out? Because they decided to do Jennifer Connelly, who's like more attractive now than. Well, now I know, but so they cut her out. Oh, because they cut her out of the flat because it wouldn't make sense. But they're. But, I mean, I watched. Oh, Top so Gun Jennifer Connelly was supposed to be. No. The no, 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 not at all. God, She's so. a new character. Uh, well, look, I'm not gonna. I I don't want to sound me and nothing towards Kelly McGillis, but I did Google her, and she's not a small woman. She just. You know, it's not gonna. Sell. No, she said she's like I don't. Like, yeah. They didn't even approach me, and of course yeah. they didn't approach. She's and it was, very like. But like Meg right Ryan, it. like she. No Meg they Ryan? said she died. I guess in the movie. Oh, they did. Uh huh. Briefly. I didn't know that. But there was a scene where Anthony Edwards Goose is at the table. Right. I, I just watched the movie the day before, and they did some very like you see a piece of Kelly McGillis's arm like behind. Tom Cruise and Anthony Edwards. I thought there was probably a con contractual thing. And then I went and Googled it. I'm like, oh, no. no they made a just, decision. Yeah, like, they went, she's not. Yeah. Did you see Val Kilmer's doc? No. Oh, my God. Like, I, I get approached all the time to do these dumb, like, uh, autograph signing uh, convention things. And Val you Kilmer. You think they're dumb? I don't think they're dumb. <laughs> However. You keep him straight, you Jamie. Get that, him. I don't want to get see him. that, bro. They're not dumb. <laughs> but but have you if you see Val Kilmer's they're documentary, huge. of course they're huge. <laughs> they'll Especially you ever, massive. If you have a what uh, movie were you in that they want you to sign for? I, uh, Come on, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. Say it. Uh, I mean, the Babysitter and the Babysitter Killer Queen. That's you should go. You bubble. Why wouldn't you? Because go? It, the fuck is wrong with you, Wild? Because you know, one time he got I drunk that Val Kilmer and he doc. stole a toy from my kid. <laughs> He came over to my house. I fucking love and he Snoopy, stole bro. My kid's I love Snoopy, Snoopy doll thing. And you don't you don't have eyes on that Snoopy toy, but if I had stolen it, I would know yeah. exactly Straight where it is. Straight him out, man. Get I this motherfucker. Exactly Dude, where it that's is. sitting here the whole time. <laughs> when you said he stole Snoopy, he started looking at his watch. <laughs> He's like, it's not a Snoopy watch. I got a bounce. Wait, where the fuck? You know what I like? Welcome to ADHHHD, the podcast. In high definition. Brought to you in canceled, standard -canceled, definition. Canceled, recanceled, uncanceled. The only guy working. Canceled definition. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can get Greg to sit in this corner seat every episode yeah. Yeah. and not say it's anything. He hasn't said shit. Poor guy's got a fucking three piece suit. He's never got shit to the do. The guy's <laughs> way more interesting than any of us put together, but Chris won't shut the Fuck up, Greg. I haven't talked in seconds. You have this guy, all the movies let him you've talk. been on, this talk guy's been living it. Let's let this guy talk. Say something. Here, let me get this Ask fucking Attack of the Clones man. droid over to you. I hate how short this fucking thing is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, are you quoting Eddie's wife? <laughs> well, you were supposed to sit here, man. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. You wanted Jamie on I the want, end? I would have been digitally edited out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So creative in cutting this woman out. He of still has the microphone in your talk. Wait, the microphone. <laughs> it's your show. Ask him a fucking question. I, bro, is I this can't your place? Over. Yeah. And you let Eddie work here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys? Is it a month to month lease? <laughs> <laughs> day to day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, his, his first time that he met me was up top, and he goes, This is a circus. Yeah, you should see the people he has around here. So wait, is they up, will all migrate onto the show. Is Club yeah. Malibu a rehab joint? No, no, no longer. This guy owns a film company. He owns a uh, record label. He now owns a podcast studio. <laughs> he, he just makes it's a lot a, of bad decisions. Music studio up top. And who's uh, any bands that we know yet are still popping off? Just popping off. So you're like Lou Adler. No. But Lou has a lot of property out here. And yeah. He does multiple things, so you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, he's a former boxing promoter. Okay, uh, I still am. Oh, you do. So you're yeah. in. You're one of my fighters lives up there. A fighter lives up there. Yeah, you didn't meet him. Oh, we want to have him. That, on was, the a, show. You... that was the fourth door. I know. He's on door number one. Is this like door a number L, two, number live three. work play? Like, but beach where you you. Yeah. These are all your artists. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. That's a good idea. Yeah, and the producers and video guys. So, how much do you own out here? All of it. Wow. 
Instead of, did he keep say talk, fuck you keep, without saying fuck you? <laughs> keep, keep talking the about your day Chris player. Is talking, he's on his fucking phone. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker. Wait, he's already gone. So Chris is talking about his 12 credits on I know. Uh, IMDb Baby where he gets day player Baby roles. Six. And, and fucking. I believe. <laughs> I believe. Anybody in the con world, dude. The po- yeah. cons are amazing. They're amazing. But did you see the Val documentary? No, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, my it. God. It's so depressing, I got to watch it. Go back to the owner. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I love Val. But you gotta watch oh, it. I'm double mic. So no. you're double mic <laughs> it. Is that parking lot yours? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when did yeah. you get that? Uh, a couple of uh, eight years ago. That's still expensive. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. You're going to always keep it apart? You're going to build on it? No. We're going to need it for the podcast studio. Wow. I mean, this is Billionaire's Beach. You can't even know. It's so crazy. Yeah. So, God bless you. Is it crazy? Jamie, well, Jamie wants to shoot everything. Jamie wants to shoot Malibu's most wanted two. Deuce. In the party. Malibu. 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 You know Malatizzi? Yeah. Malatizzi. 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 Yo, I want to do the second one, but like. Do it right up top. Right up top is the spot. We've got a company, Malibu Films. Yeah, but we need paper. Yeah. We're in it. We're in it. He rang the bell. We got paper. We got yeah. paper. Yeah, the Patreon right I'm, uh, now we're up to thirteen. <laughs> Yo, man, you you fuck with uh Tony Taverna? Yeah, no. Oh yeah, I know Tony. That's the bomb. Yeah, listen Tony's to my this. Friend. Um, now, oh man, he's fuck. gone now. He sold it. He did. Yeah. Who owns it? The guy who owns the whole country place, the whole country mark guy. I gotta hear this. Same food though. Tell me if you like this idea. So Malibu Dispensary. There's only two. I had a meeting with them. How did they get the zoning? It's shocking to me. They keep trying to use this. Oh, for the Chris, dispensary. I don't know when this became a town hall meeting. But <laughs> <laughs> how do you do, you? do you want to talk about the recycling? I mean, this motherfucker goes from fuck middle schools <laughs> to oh, God. how they're zoning. Um, zoning. But <laughs> they, but he's already hired. He's hired for another babysitter. Um, <laughs> They, I wanted to get involved with that because they were looking to sell. I don't know if you own it. And I wanted to take the guy holding the burrito plate and yeah. make that a new burrito place. Wouldn't that be a good get your weed, get your burrito? That's great. Yeah, perfect. Problem Market is, pairing, man. Yeah. They kind of, they've been trying to do it here. They should. Weed down below, mushrooms up top. What's the issue? I wouldn't have money. They wouldn't pay. Really? I love how you went from rehabs to... <laughs> <laughs> but hold on. Well, mushrooms hold are on. a way out, dude. It's, it's there was no money in rehab. Let's just know, start you know, selling it. Yeah, I, I got a question. I got a question. Is mushrooms considered sober in your eyes? No. Yeah, right? Is weed? No. Exactly. So why would you do it? Because you're a businessman. Well, they uh, they made an offer. But, but are you sober? Money. Yeah. Yeah, but you would still, you if they want to do it, it's a part of your business. It's got nothing to do with it. No, I really didn't want to. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't pursuing it. Hard. But do, I have a question for you. Being in the this is a serious question. I really want to ask. Uh, do you uh, do you think that weed is a, like a gateway drug to other it, drugs? It's not a gateway. Uh, I, I mean, it, it it depends. If somebody gets sober and they start smoking weed, almost a hundred percent of them go. Let's back their inhibitions down. It. Yeah, it's like it's like going back trying to play the penny slots when you're a dollar right. player. And then sooner or later you're gonna. But go, my you know, my theory on it is that people that do heroin really don't have a fear of weed. No, meaning like, <laughs> no, they're not afraid. Of it. Yeah, they're not afraid of it. So, That's so, so, yeah. no. so because I've a buddy of mine's a DEA agent, and I've had this argument with him, and I'm like, if they were gonna do heroin, they were gonna do everything else. Yeah. So, but like, there are people that are doing weed that are like, oh, this is where I'm gonna stop. Yeah, many oh, yeah, people stop sure. there, but and those people are called but they're smoking a lot of weed. <laughs> yeah, well, weed is a problem now because there's people that are going off of it because it's too much because yeah. they they're not. Oh functioning. yeah, that, that, I get them in rehab. But weed the, guys, I have a question for you. Weed guys, really? Is that oh, yeah. is is the California yeah. sober thing is such a fucking con? 
Totally. Like, I'm California sober. I just do Percocet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got Vegas sober too. Yeah. What is that well, one? You don't hear about Vegas. That's sober. like the. What I is, equate what is Vegas that. Sober? What is Vegas sober? It's. I'm not doing what I went to rehab for. The one thing. <laughs> so, yeah. so I've you know, chosen like, another one. Sure. Like if I'm a crack guy Wait. and I'm smoking meth, I'm Vegas sober. <laughs> Two things. <laughs> that I equate that. <laughs> With the Mormon girl who only does anal and says she's still a virgin. I remember right? that. Yeah. Okay. Same but thing. The thing is, is that I was trying to work on this joke. Don't make mad at me. But I, I don't have it. But I always think, what's people's natural state? Chris, you might like this. Because I grew up, I went to church all the time. Fucking altar boy like yeah. this. And my mom was like, look at that station. And we walk, yeah. pray to that station. Like, you do like 10 oh, yeah. stations. Catholic? Yes. Yeah, I was there. And you know what it is, right? And I'm like, we're sitting there. And like, we're looking at this poor guy. He's got blood on him and all this shit. And I'm thinking, when I went back, I'm like, do people really want to do this? Or would they rather be in a pool raging on ketamine at the wind? <laughs> What's people's natural state? And I'm going to go with the wind. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm going to agree. And so I guess why... Those are your two options. Pretty much. Like, okay. either you're repressed as fuck, which right. eventually you get crazy, sure. or you're crazy. So there has to be this balance in Europe. One, The first time I ever saw Coke, and I saw heroin before, long story, because I lived up in Philly, and so I grew up, and there was a guy at a small pizza shop, and he injected heroin in his feet. I was 12 years old, and I lived a very nice life, but my mom's like, get a side job. I told my mom, she's like, oh, God. But like she's like, be careful. But the guy wasn't weird. He was just a functioning addict. I learned yeah. all about like dilapidated veins. He was your boss. He was the owner of the shop. And I was like, and everyone's like, yeah, that's what he does. But don't worry about it. And, you know, I never had tried it, never had any things for it. My thing is, is that the first time I saw Coke wasn't even there. I saw it on a on a set. And I was like, which set? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was like a a couple people did a little bump and it was that and they were very European about it. Like some people like a, some the guys like some people like a cappuccino. <laughs> Other people like a little bump. And, <laughs> and there was never a fact. I don't know what their lives were. They seemed very healthy and it, it was a, another culture. So I thought maybe there are people that do it. And I, kind of, I never did coke. I know you don't believe that, but I thought that for a minute. But I do believe there are people. Up, I think America is so extreme. Am I crazy? It's like, you do one thing, you're fucking it. You know what I mean? Or no? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. That's why I, like, I don't think booze is terrible, but it's such a con. It's like, out of all these fucking. Of all your choices, it's. it's well, there's these mothers drinking six white claws. You're drinking them, and you think you're drinking fruit juice. Well, you know what I mean? They get wiped out. Wipe the fuck out. I got a big They're... boat they rent, and I just watch them. You got your Just hands in everything. <laughs> I got a boat. And he's like this. Skateboarders? Oh, yeah, I got a skateboard park. Those motherfuckers. Those motherfuckers. They're doing caps and heroin. No, but you guys tell me if this is true. The car the comedy club has been infiltrated worse than ever because of White Claws. Drunk, white, fucking. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I more people. hate the, the weed audiences. You did a joke that I do, a very similar joke oh, about, uh, about how the audience, no, but you get the stoned audiences and they don't, they, they don't, don't laugh. Their face doesn't laugh. They laugh on the inside and they're like, <laughs> and you're they like, <laughs> they don't make noise. No, no noise comes out of their mouth because they're like, but I'll, but I'll I, won't, I won't do it anymore. No, the it's, only reason I did that is because during the pandemic, I played a bunch of dispensaries. It was the only place that would allow us to play. And they were like, like looked at me, like, yeah, and and then you ask them, like, like, yeah, the yeah. yeah, and you go, well, you know that old joke, tell your face, well, you yeah. know, tell your voice, yeah. because your face says, but there's no noise coming out, and their their timings off, like they'll start laughing during a segue, and you're like, oh fuck, and then you, and I'll I'll be on stage just going, I'm bombing, and then I'll go, are you guys all high? And then they start giggling, and you're like, everybody's high in the crowd now. And it happens worse in California, Colorado, and the school or the places where it's just like weed, right. weed, weed. You go to some towns, it's still. Our audience is getting better behaved because there, there was a there was a. No. Time after <laughs> are, you, are you doing stand up still? No. At all? Not at all. That's crazy that you quit. Yeah. Because I would, because you heard what I did live when we started. Yeah. I would be canceled immediately. Well, why not do it? 
I, I mean, because if you get canceled, you get reinvigorated. I if disagree. Recanceled is a no, great there's term. There's people Jamie. that can get like canceled. No, 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 yeah. instance. I, no, no right. I'm not saying I'm gonna get canceled. You better be out of really existence. good, like Louis C.K., and you can come back and do really. But well. look at Louis like, C.K. He's not coming guy? back and doing is, really who well. Is the, who Louis is killing it. Who is the right? He was the secret life of pets, making money yeah, hand over fist. He's killing it right now. He's killing. His fan base will never leave him. I agree. I agree. But he's not making the money that he was. 15 years ago. So that's what you got to do. You got to start might, a church, man. Again. Yeah, he, he might, might again. again. He might again. Uh, who's the guy that was the right wing guy, that the uh, gay guy that got canceled and like we never saw him again? Tony Jim Jeffries. Jeffries. No. <laughs> yeah. Right wing gay guy? Right wing gay guy that. Uh, was he, was he sound, a comic? Uh, <sighs> or was he a, new, a pundit? Like, honest He's a question. pundit and he would go speak at colleges. And, yes, I know what you're talking about. But he got canceled because it was like a Cosby thing, though. I think he was like. He said something it, about it, young like, boys or something. It's not David Hogg, because obviously that's a lefty guy, but it's like the right-wing yeah, version yeah, of David Hogg, yeah, like I, kind I, of equivalent. That's it. Milo. Ian, Milo, Milo, Milo he, well, he, did, Milo. he wasn't a comedian, but he did some crazy but, shit. But, I mean, that's like cancel. Yeah, you're, you're gone. You're yeah. gone. Who's the blonde uh, Ann Coulter, I believe? Yeah. Like the skinny blonde Republican lady? Yeah. I met her. Sherrod introduced me to her. They were on some gig together. Couldn't have been the, a nicer more affable person off the air. You know, as soon as they say cut, she was so lovely and just like personable and charming. And then as soon as they said action, she's just like, burn it all down. It's like, it's an act. It's it's an act. Yeah. I think for a lot of those people, it's an act. I I think that comedy has never been, it's never been better. And I hate to say that. I agree. I, I agree. And I've seen different eras. Sure. But I mean I have Well, because you have to you have to really walk in the in the landmines now. Well you, when you're I, walking in a field of landmines. You've got to be have really you ever seen the clubs good. as crowded as they are now? Never. No. Like to give like when I started, my probably started when you did maybe a little earlier, but like I was we started, I believe, in nineteen ninety, ninety one where the end of the boom of the club on every corner. So where Seinfeld and Tim Allen, they all blew up. Right. And before that, it was the coffee houses of the sixties. And I guess, you know, like Woody and Lenny Bruce before them. Right. Like Gallagher, God rest his soul. And, does he have a son that does his act? Gallagher. No, no, no. no. Okay. 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 So that's for another, he, the clubs, Eddie just said, have never been more hyped. No, more packed. More crowded. Here, 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 and there's so many you can st- there's stadium and arena. So comedy. many levels now. Like, do what, you like stadium comedy, bro, bro? Bro, in the '70s, one comic played a stadium, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Right. In the '80s, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, Dice, Eddie, Eddie, Murphy. Right, right, right. Eddie Murphy, and at the end, Dice. No, it's like 20 guys now. And then, no, in the '90s, it was like Dice. Fluffy is playing Dodger Stadium. Yeah. And then 2000s, it was Dane. Like, now, there was four guys that played stadiums last week. Yeah. Right. It's, it's crazy. And so what's beautiful is our art form is rock and roll size. Mm-hmm. Cool. And you can develop your audience, whether you're mainstream or not. And they're so into it. But as much as they're into it, they also hate it, you, the other side. Mm-hmm. So it's awesome. But it is a minefield, like you said. Greg's been on stage at the comedy store. I, I just okay. like You got to hear this. And, but, uh, no, I can't. Chris is like, I can't. <laughs> you got two. You got two mics. Right? <laughs> we got two. I, that messes it up, though, doesn't it? You can't divide the. Um, no, I was just drunk. <laughs> I, every day I talk to him, there's always a good bottom? story. Yeah. Did no, you, I, do the main room or the belly room? Main drunk? room. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was amateur. Did not get past. Amateur night. And I was telling the guy I didn't think people were funny. And, uh. <laughs> So he asked me my name, and then he just put me on the stage. How'd you do? Killed it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> At least I thought so. I was drunk. Right. The light went off, and I just kept going. <laughs> no, I didn't know. I didn't he first the light the off. That. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to hang there when all those guys were there. He knew Kenneth. Robin was... Williams and Roseanne Barr oh. and Dice and, like, the whole crew. Where the guy is on the front porch. I got out. to see Robin do a set once. Yeah. It's wow. fucking amazing, dude. Wow. I had Robin pull me on stage once when I told him not to. I kept telling him, he goes, uh, I go, do you want to close the show? And he goes, no, you close it. And I was like, where? Like, At uh, the Throckmorton up in San Francisco. And I go, in Mill Valley, if you've ever done and that. Who, were you opening for him? No, I was headlining and he comes in. As a so I go, in. he's a pop in. So I go, oh, you, Robin, you know, like, I'll go on before you. You go. Do you want a headline, right? You want to close it? And he goes, no, 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 no. 
he goes, I don't want to do stand up. He goes, uh, you do your thing. Uh, Cause I was, I was supposed to do like an hour or whatever. He go, I go, I'll just do like 15, five minutes, 15, whatever. He goes, no, 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 you do your thing. And then I'll come on with you and we'll do improv. And I go, that's exactly what I said to him. I go, I don't, I don't do improv. And he goes, ah, oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> He and broke the first well, rule of improv. I know. I do deny. not do improv. Never deny. No, I don't do improv. Yes, and especially if Robin Williams <laughs> asks you. Build. If Robin Williams asks you to do a bump at 2 a.m. You do the bump yeah, at 2 a.m. I do my set. I have a great set. I walk off stage. Robin comes on, and he goes, did you like Eddie? And the crowd's like, yeah. And he goes, you want to see him back out here? Oh, and I'm no. backstage going, no, no, no. Like, I'm fine with this. Leave I just him want wanting to watch. more. And he goes, come on, get out here. And he grabs me from the stage and <sighs> pulls me out. And I'm literally just standing there. And he's like dancing around me, doing all his things and doing the mic and going, look what I have here. It's a blah, 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 blah. And then he'll, there's props because it's a theater uh, with like, they have a theater. And he's pulling out the props and he's putting helmets on me. And he's like, look, it's my dick in the morning. You know, and he's like, and everybody's laughing. And I just keep standing there. And finally I go, oh God, it's going to be so sad when they take one of my heroes away in a straight jacket. Nice. And, and the audience laughs. Of course. And he looks at me he changes his whole persona and it goes from like ah, to how dare you make fun of me and i was like and then Please he goes so that I, that's what, so then he does something else funny and he goes now you i like do something funny and i'm like oh my god he's in like a competition with me and i go i go is this eight mile like are we are we having a funny off and people start laughing again and then he gets me and i he just starts like really making fun of me. And I kind of just mosey off stage and I'm watching and I'm like, wow, that was really uncomfortable. And I'm standing there and Robin comes off. He kills, he kills. He walks off and everybody like stays and they had pizza and everything. And he just beelines out the door and leaves his friend there. Whoa. So I go up to his friend and I go, Hey, uh, did I piss off Robin? He goes, ah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I go, Oh I God. go, well, I, I, I didn't, I didn't mean to, I go, I, I don't do improv and I don't do right. those characters and he was doing all that stuff and I didn't know what to do. So I did what I do. I make fun of people. And, right. and he goes, yeah, he goes, it don't feel bad. He goes, I, I, Robin doesn't really know who he is. So that's what he does. You know, like he does all these characters cause he's not. Remember, remember when you and I did the show and the guy said, you have to edit out the story about Robin Williams. <laughs> Right? Who was that guy? Don't, oh, it was. Yeah, him. let's stay away from it. Let's end the show. Jesus Christ. Yeah. This is yeah, we, we got our time. We went full circle. We did Chris, our time. Chris is gonna Chris is gonna bring us back around. All right, so Jay Leno had a great joke about Robin Williams. <laughs> no, you do this before the twenty minutes and then you stop. end the show. I wanna thank everybody, JB. Yeah. Jason, Go ahead and Greg. When Okay. I'm not going to thank you, Chris. You're welcome. I'm not thanking you. You're welcome for putting your stupid season back on my shoulders and running <laughs> to the finish line. You're welcome. I think uh, we'll do many more of these where we see Jamie here. Nice meeting you. There's no way Jamie comes back. There is no way. You could drive a bus to his house. He is not leaving that Listen, house. I can't do the show, but I'll let you do a show with B-Rat. B-Rat. <laughs> oh, is that is that your alter ego? character? Oh, my Malibu character. <laughs> But B, you were on a show called B B Red's a real person, right? Like I saw you, you were on a B Red with B Rad or no? I was B B Rad. I was on a B Real. That's like B Real. Thank B-Real. you. B Real. That's the Smokeout show. Yeah. So you B Rad was on B Real's show. Yeah. This past B, week. B Boys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. I'm trying. I'm I'm doing a plug for I'm him. I'm trying to end this. See my dates at jamiekennedy.com. Thank you, Jamie. Damn. And your podcast is is incredible. Hate to break it to you. What is that what it's called? Yeah, it's on. You can see it on my website, but it's on it's Spotify. And I see clips all the time on Instagram. Yes. Less um, and less. It's great. It's and thank you very much for doing the show and thank putting you for up having with me. Mr. Wild. Greg and I do a show together. I'd like to plug. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. It's called I'd like to plug. <laughs> He's got his he's got his little you know pitch pipe and he blows it. <laughs> he's got the pitch pipe. It's a great fucking show. It's a great show. No paywall. No paywall. No paywall. It's a very good show. This is the one I use. <laughs> All right. Hey, so thanks for listening to talking shit. You guys know what to do. Go to our Patreon. Oh, 
You should have switched to electric. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Patreon.com slash talking shit. Oh, uh, sorry. Not talking shit. Bingle Bus 2.0. We yeah. dare no, God forbid no, we talk shit. shit. End Bingle it, Bus Machete. 2.0. End it. End it. Oh.